Hi friends, so welcome to lecture 48 on our helicopter dynamics course. And this is the second part on our momentum theory in forward flight where we are going to derive the expression for induced velocity. And today we are going to discuss the non-dimensional form of this equation. I'm Dr. Anjan Ganguly. So let's return to our flow field for the flow through the rotor in forward flight. Now, like I mentioned in the last lecture, through the rotor, the induced velocity is small v. And also, far upstream, there is a forward velocity v. It's at some inclination alpha to the rotor disk plane. And therefore, this v has two components given by the sine and the cosine. And far downstream, we have already shown the velocity w is equal to 2v. So in the previous lecture, I derived this expression for velocity, the induced velocity in terms of the rotor thrust, the forward speed, density of air, rotor cross section, the angle which the velocity makes, and then we saw that this equation has v on both sides. So let's try to simplify this equation and put it in a non-dimensional form. So immediately we can rewrite this equation in this form here. So you can see here that t by 2 rho a, this is same as vh, where we are using the subscript h to refer to hover quantities. So the induced velocity expression in the hour situation, Vh, that is two, t by 2 rho a. So I put that here. And then I can write this expression in the denominated term in terms of two squares. So if you square these out, you are going to see that you are going to get a V squared term because remember sine square alpha plus cos square alpha equal to one. You're going to get this term here, two VV, sine alpha, and then you are going to get a small v squared term. Okay, so we write it in this form. Now we define some very important non-dimensional parameters which are ubiquitous in helicopter literature. The first is the advance ratio mu. And this advance ratio is essentially a non-dimensional measure of the forward speed. And what we have done here, you can see, is we have taken the tangential component of the forward speed that is tangential to the rotor disk plane and divided it by rotation speed into blade radius. So the net result is that this is a non-dimensional quantity because both in the numerator and the denominator, you have velocity. So this is very important and you must put this in your memory banks. Now the next important quantity is inflow ratio lambda. And this is the ratio of the velocity through the rotor disk. So that has the forward speed component given by capital V, the induced velocity component given by small v. And again, we divide this velocity by rotation speed into radius to get the non-dimensional measure. Now, this can be written in this form, mu into tan of alpha plus lambda i. And how that is so, you can see by this expression here, I can take the expression of v from the advance ratio definition. So that would become mu into rotation speed into r by cos alpha and replace it here in this equation. So if I do that, I get this term here. So you essentially get mu into tan of alpha. And then lambda i is defined as v by rotation speed into r. OK. So that is the induced inflow in forward flight. So v divided by the rotation speed into r. So again, non-dimensional. Both may be in meter per second, for example, or feet per second, depending on where you are in the world. Now, recall the induced velocity in our condition. 
so that was vh here by rotation speed into r and that was equal to root ct by 2 so i can immediately square it and get this expression here and also from the definition of lambda and mu i can write this here so essentially what i have taken is i have taken the definition of lambda i brought the rotation speed term to this side and same thing i have done with mu here now why i did all that mathematics is i want to simplify this expression and non dimensionalize it so now i can clearly see that the denominator terms here can be written in terms of lambda and mu okay so the cos alpha term is mu into rotation speed into radius and the sin alpha plus v term is lambda into rotation speed into radius so i substitute these two back here so i get this okay now remember vh we already said can be expressed in terms of ct by 2 and this term square so we replace vh by that the expression for vh is shown in the previous slide and then i take the rotation speed term to the left hand side so i get this here and this side becomes much more cleaner then i already know that lambda i is v divided by rotation speed into r okay so from this i can get immediately lambda i is going to be this term okay so i bring the rotation speed below this here and so this becomes lambda i and i get a completely clean term in terms of ct to root mu square plus lambda square now when you are in forward flight ct is known that's the thrust coefficient mu is known from your forward speed and therefore you can calculate this so just remember lambda i can be expressed in terms of lambda so from our previous discussion we know lambda i was lambda minus mu tan of this angle and therefore i can write this as the equation now this equation i can write as a standard equation by writing it in this form so function of lambda equals this equation equals zero so we have to find zeros or roots of this particular equation and you can clearly see this is a non-linear equation and uh, we have to solve this for lambda now typically you can solve it using newton raphson method the convergence is extremely rapid using newton raphson method okay of course you can solve it using a different method also there are also some people and some papers which say that you could solve this by squaring both sides and so on but in that case you will get superfluous roots and you need to check for those roots in newton raphson case you won't get that problem because you can start from a guess which is a good guess so now the newton raphson method essentially says that lambda n plus one is lambda n minus f by f dash at the nth point so here this equation can be obtained by doing some differentiations and so on now you can use this equation to update lambda and this will essentially converge in a small number of iterations you need to start from a good initial guess and one of the advantages is we have a good initial guess here the hour condition so essentially what you can do is you can go back to the equation for lambda and substitute here for lambda square so that would be ct by 2 and from this equation you can obtain a pretty good guess for the lambda value in forward flight okay because you know C ct you know mu you know alpha so you can obtain lambda value to start this method now in certain cases if you are in high speed forward flight actually the lambda i value degenerates here because what happens here is that mu may be much larger than lambda so this is the wake is being swept away condition so lambda i will be ct by 2 mu so rather surprisingly in high speed forward flight you have a closed form solution for this problem as well as at 
mu is zero, you have another closed form solution for this problem. But especially in the lower advanced ratio re regions or lower forward speed regions, you need to do these calculations and solve for this nonlinear system. So this is a typical curve here showing the induced velocity in forward flight. So you can see here that as uh, at uh, velocity zero, uh, hover condition V by VH is one because essentially there V is equal to VH. And typically the induced velocity decreases somewhat in forward flight. And uh, at high speed flight, CT by two mu gives a pretty good result here. Okay, so this is an interesting case. So again, we now have the expression to obtain momentum theory results in forward flight. They are based on newton raphson method and solution of that equation. Don't limit yourself to newton raphson method. This is a good equation to play around with if you want to use some methods uh, like second method or different type of numerical methods and so on. And in fact, we have written a paper where we have... Uh, solve this equation precisely by squaring it and then removing the superfluous root so that is also possible that's also given in some papers and books but typically newton raphson is the way to go most commercial codes or codes in universities use newton raphson method to solve this problem the advantage being the guess here is very good and therefore the convergence is very rapid you can see here that the guess value coming from uh, our condition is not very far from what you are getting at forward flight conditions. So, you know, these kind of methods, newton raphson proceeds extremely rapidly. So, of course, if some of you are interested in applied math, uh, which I am, then you can also experiment with newton raphson methods, which use second derivative, third derivatives, and so on, because this problem has a closed form expression for f lambda and therefore it's very easy to obtain f dash f double dash f triple dash and all these things they can very easily be obtained from any symbolic software like maple and mathematica if you are not somebody who likes to differentiate equations in your free time so i will stop this lecture here i will see you in my next video